All right, guys. So today's video is going to focus on, <clears throat> excuse me, how do we find Y, S, T, and T, U given the following shape here. So if I'm taking a look at the shape, um, there's a couple of things to notice. So typically this shape here is called a kite. Um, I mean, it kind of sort of looks like a kite. Kind of picture the tail coming off over here, right? Sometimes you'll see this picture with the line that cuts across right over here. Um, uh, but this is known as a kite. And there's a couple of known things about this shape that's really good to know jumping into this problem. So first off, you, we see this long line uh, that cuts through this shape here. And what that long line does is it happens to cut this shape directly in half. And what we can see by that is it kind of forms these two triangles. We have this triangle over here on the left, we have this triangle over here on the right. And what it does is it actually forms two perfect congruent triangles. These two triangles are the same. I mean, we see that they both have a right angle over here, so they share a right angle, um, or they have the same right angle in it. Um, this line that cuts through, they both have that line for the triangle, right? So it's the, we can see, so this line here, goes for this triangle and it goes for this triangle as well. So they have the same angle, they have the same side. And then we see that these marks over here too signify that these two angles are the same. So they have two angles marked that are the same. So if this is the same and this is the same, we can assume that this angle up here is also going to be the same. So if all three angles are the same, they share this side over here, these are congruent triangles. So please, when you are given a shape, do notice the markings on it. Um, in geometry, it's so easy to try and use our eyes. And I was like, oh, it looks the same. You know, it looks about right to me. It's never good to assume in geometry. You always need to go based off of what the problem, what the instructions tell you, or how it is labeled. And based off of these labels, we can say that these two triangles are congruent. How that's going to help us, uh, we need to find Y. So I see Y, we have 6Y for this side over here in the triangle. And we see that this side over here equals 4Y plus 6. It's also asking us to find the side ST. So that's this side over here we're going to have to find. And then we also need to find TU. Um, so those are the three things that we need to find here. So pretend that this line here, so this cuts uh, this shape directly in half. And if I were going to take this and I were going to fold it across this line and fold it in with itself, this triangle would match perfectly up. This corner goes to this corner here, right? It just folds in right like that. So that means this side is the same as this side. These two sides are obviously the same. And then what that tells us is that ST is actually the same thing as TU. They are the same exact length. What that allows us to do then is that we can take ST, which is equal to 6Y, and we can set this equal to this 4Y plus 6 because they are the same. This side equals this side. And since they equal each other, I can take their values and set them equal to each other and solve. All right, so this 6Y is equal to this 4Y plus 6. So we're going to set that equation up and we're going to solve. Now if I'm solving this equation for y, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 4y and move it over to the left hand side. So I, I'm going to join my two variables together. Since this is a positive 4y, we need to do the opposite and subtract that 4y on both sides. On the right hand side, 4y minus 4y cancels, leaving us with 6. And on the left hand side, 6y minus 4y gives us 2y. We're left with 2y is equal to 6. Keep in mind that is 2 times y. So the opposite of multiplication is division. So we're going to divide out the coefficient. And 2 over 2 cancels, leaving us with y is equal to 3. So that gives us our first answer here. y is equal to 3. The other things I wanted us to find was st and then TU. Now, keep in mind, remember that ST 
is equal to 6y. That's what that side is. And if we know what y is now, what we're going to do here is a substitution. If y is equal to 3, that means instead of y, I can plug in a 3 for it. So 6y becomes 6 times 3. And 6 times 3 is 18. So that tells us that st is equal to 18. Do the same thing with the side TU. TU um, is equal to 4y plus 6. Instead of y, substitute in a 3. So if we do that, we're left with 4 times 3 plus 6, right? We're literally just erasing the y and putting in a 3. Order of operations tells us to multiply before we add. So 4 times 3 does give us a 12. And 12 plus 6 is equal to 18, which makes sense because remember, ST is the same thing as TU. Honestly, we didn't even need to substitute into this 4Y plus 6 if we did it. Uh, I mean, we didn't really need to just because once we find 6Y, we can say, I mean, <laughs> once we find ST, we know it's the same thing as TU, so we can automatically just label them both the same. But again, just for verification, plugging it into 4y plus 6, it does come out to 18, and we see that they do match up, so they are congruent sides there. Otherwise, that's it for this video.